But I can call with Christ Jesus. In the Paul's letter, the most complicated and also very hard to understand and the deep theological concepts are based in the components. Of course, it is hard to understand in an ordinary view. Even great theologians are struggled to interpret this verse. But Paul is very clear in his teachings. Martin Luther, who found the Protestant church, of course, he is not intended to start a, a new sect. He wants to reform the Roman Catholic Church. Martin Luther never be advocate for any division in the church. But at the same time, he wants to reform. He wants to eliminate certain evil things from the church and to purify the church. When you are struggling in those things, suddenly he was struggling with own, his own sinfulness. So he was very much terrified whether I can accept it by God, whether my deeds help me in any way to become the child of God. He spent many nights without sleep. One night, suddenly, he heard a word from God. And that uh, word comes from the heaven he hopes. That call comes and told him, take and read, take and read. And Martin Luther asked, what I have to read? Uh, he said, that uh, voice said, read Romans 117. Roman 117. In this word, for the gospel is righteousness of God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last, just as the written, the righteousness will live by faith. That word, not by any deed, because at that time, the church, that is at that time only one Roman Catholic church, they sell tokens for the forgiveness of sins. But Martin Luther had question about that, and he also struggling whether my deeds can help me to redeem us. How can I be acceptable God? So this word come, the righteous will live by faith. So he said, faith alone, grace alone, scripture alone. Sola scripture, sola gratia, sola faith. These three things Martin Luther emphasized. Not by our deeds, but only through faith. The fundamental word, word of God, this uh, reformation comes through Martin Luther is this Roman 117. The righteous will live by faith. So when he has gone to explain these things, faith alone, and he said grace alone, sola gratia. So some people asked, if the grace must increase, I can sin. The more we sin, more we can receive the grace from God. But in Romans 6 chapter, he said, no. God's grace is not for giving license to sin. But it calls us to repent 
and live one day to him. So, he emphasizes during the time of baptism, we are buried with Christ and raised with Christ. But now I alive in God, in Christ Jesus. In 2 Corinthians 5th chapter 17 verse, if we are in Christ, we are new creation. All the old things are gone. Everything is new. So our old sinful life gone. We must call to lead a life as Christ. He emphasizes that. And even Jesus said, if you want to follow me, deny yourself, take your cross, and follow me every day. During the season of Lent, we emphasis of this denial of self. There is no more I, but Christ. So that all the apostles and our forefathers and mothers, those who accepted Christ, they live for Christ. That's why we are here. When we look out about the church history, even in our church, the sacrificial life of the missionaries. They live, but not for their own, not for their selfish needs. They live, they are alive in Christ Jesus to bring the kingdom of God into this world. Morning, we meditated about Mother Mary and uh, Saint Joseph, how they submitted their life for Christ's salvation ministry. Even though they are young couples, they take many steps. They underwent many sufferings to bring Jesus Christ into this world and help him in the ministry. Every, every apostles, they committed their life to Jesus. That's why Paul said, but I live, I, but I alive in God, in Christ Jesus. Before that, Paul was a great scholar. He's a great philosopher. In Jewish religion, he is authority. But he considered everything is nothing. After he met Jesus on the way of Tamasco, on the road of Tamasco, he surrendered everything to God and ministered to God. Many times we think, of course, it may be possible for the people in the scripture, Paul, our, our apostles, Mary, Simeon, so, so many people. But not only that, the present day in our generation, we are witnessing many holy people, they sacrifice their life. For example, Mother Teresa. She came from a foreign land at the age of 18 and she started his career as a nursery teacher. But when she saw the people in need in the Cal Calcutta streets, she submitted her life to God. We know how much she sacrificed her life for the people, those who are in need. Likewise, recent years, Graham Stains in Odisha. He came 
with his family and work among the people those who are need especially the leprosy patients but what happened to him and his children we all know that we witnessed that even after that his wife never want to leave india because of government's advice she has to leave india but she is willing to continue because of that only the churches are here because of that only we are remaining as christians we live but are alive in god in christ jesus no more i i am the ambassador you are the ambassadors of christ dear friends this lenses and calls reminds us to turn to god we are worshiping christ not only to get the blessings of this earthly blessings god has a particular purpose for us that is to create the kingdom of god here that's what every day we are praying that's what jesus taught us to pray thy kingdom come thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven that is our goal god's will will be done in this earth we have to pray and work to bring the god's kingdom in this world that's why god calls us anointed us anointed by the holy spirit dear friends let this lens season reminds us to turn to god and do what the best we can do think about others what is spirituality and what is worldliness the worldly desires always think about for me what i can get what i can grab how i can prosper but jesus said you always think what you can do what you can give how my life can be useful for others not i not self centeredness self centeredness is the worldly desire but spiritually is thing is christ centered life other centered life my words my deeds everything bring glory to his name when we meditate upon the lord's prayer the first request he put is our father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name your name must be glorified through me that is the first request others follows simultaneously but the first and foremost prayer we have to your name must be glorified through my life through my deeds so always think about that but alive in god in christ jesus we died with christ our sins are buried with christ during the time of baptism and confirmation of course sometimes child baptism people may ask how can that child knows about that we are not giving baptism to every child if the parents are baptized people on the basis of the faith of their parents we are baptizing that their children but when the age come there is another sacrament there the baptism fulfills there we ask their personal acceptance of christ that is called confirming the so when we we at the time of baptism we are buried with christ and we are raised with christ to live for jesus so dear friends let us continue to meditate on this but alive in god in christ jesus i alive i already died for my selfishness i already died for my sinful life there is no more sin jesus never 
again go to the cross. Once he died and once was risen. Likewise, once we are died for the sin, there is no more. Made to sin again. We live to proclaim Christ. Through our deeds and words, we have to glorify God. That is what Jesus said in his uh, uh, Beatitudes in uh, Matthew 5, 16. Uh, in Ma Matthew 5, 16, Jesus said, let us read it for you. I will read from verse 14, Matthew 5, verses begins from 14. You are the light of the world. A city on hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Not only Jesus is the light of the world, Jesus called us, you are the light of the world. You are my representatives. So you and I are called to be the light of the world. So our light might be shine before others that they may see our good deeds and praise our Father in heaven. So that, for that only, in church calendar, we are more emphasizing about the Lenten season. In 365 days, these 46 days, including Sunday, of course, Sunday usually not included in Lent, it is always a celebration day. It's a, this is rise on the, the day first of the week. So we celebrate Sunday as the resurrection day. So we, not, we are not including Sunday into Lent. But these 40 days, we must examine ourselves whether I live for Christ or still I remain in the sinful life. God calls us, think about yourself, repent, and turn to me. God, the Holy Spirit, always reminds us that we are the people of God. Whenever, whenever we sin, our former Bishop Asre always said, for every human being there is a conscience. And that conscience always told that person, you are doing what you are doing is right or wrong. But as a baptized Christian, we are an extra person with us, that is the God, the Holy Spirit. Once we baptize, the Holy Spirit come in us, because in 1 Corinthians, third chapter 16, verse said, do you not know that you are the temple of God? The Holy Spirit dwells in you. At the time of baptism, the Holy Spirit come and dwell in us, in our bodies. Whenever we go wrong, I, whenever we are sin, the Holy Spirit always reminds us, no, this is not the correct way. But he never leaves us. He always condemned us and put us in the right path. If you are not hear that word, Holy God, the Holy Spirit is very sorry about us. Dear friends, once again, God wants us to repent and remind our duty that you are the people of God. One small story I share with you and want to conclude my message. Once, the British emperor 
and his wife and children are going through the streets of London. And the streets, many street children are playing. The royal children wants to play with their children. And they request their parents allow them to go and play with their street children. For some time, the king and the queen never allowed the children to go there. But the children persisting and again and again asking, Dad, Mom, please allow us, we'll go and come. So finally, the emperor said, go and play with the children. But remember that you are royal children. That's what Jesus also said us. We are in this world. We are in the sinful world. We are in the selfish world. But God reminds us, don't forget that you are the children of God. You have a special purpose in this world. Not to go according to the worldly values. God's values are different from the worldly values. Worldly values always said, those who are have are the blessed people. But the spiritual Christ value said, blessed are those who give to others, those who share with us, with others. Not getting, but giving is the greatest thing. The model is our Lord Jesus Christ himself. Even though he is equal to God, in Philippians you can read, he emptied himself. He is not unwilling to bear the cross. Of course, he is equal to God the Father, God the Holy Spirit. Because he wants to redeem the whole world, whole human being, not only the human being, whole creation. He came this world and he humbled himself till the cross and accept that cross for us and he, he emptied himself. Because he emptied himself we become rich. We, we are saved. Jesus wants us to follow his rules. Dear friends, let us commit ourselves into God. I, I hope you know one chorus. Let us all sing together. Sing together. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. So we are all decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. We are alive in God, in Christ Jesus to bring the kingdom of God in this world. May the God, the Holy Spirit, help us. Amen.